Hi class, welcome. It's Dr. Lindner, and we are going to be looking at neurology in today's uh, lecture, in today's class. Uh, the reason why I start off with a little humor, just by looking at good old Homer Simpson, um, they put a small little brain in this skull, and I think by the image they try and, you know, kind of lead you to think small brain equals lack of intelligence. But the reality is if we look at computers over time, we've noticed that computers used to be huge. And what's happening is they're getting smaller, smaller, and smaller and getting faster and faster and faster. We see the same thing with parts of the brain is that sometimes the smallest parts of the brain are the fastest parts of the brain. So not good to make those assumptions. Let's take a look at the layout of the neural system. And you'll hear me use that word neural versus nervous. I don't like to be nervous. I don't want my students to be nervous. So I typically will use the word neural, but you know what I'm referring to, the way the textbook refers to it as the nervous system. But I believe that there's a lot of power to the words we use, and I don't want anyone being nervous. So when we look at the neural system, you'll see here on the left-hand side, we have a CNS, which stands for the central neural system. CNS is central neural system. And on the right, we have a PNS, which stands for peripheral neural system, the peripheral neural system. So we have a central neural system, which is made up of only the brain and the spinal cord and nothing else. So what makes up the central neural system? Just the brain and the spinal cord. Anything other than the brain and the spinal cord is part of the peripheral neural system. Peripheral meaning it's in the periphery. It comes off of the brain or it comes off of the spinal cord. And all of these structures off of the right come off of the brain or the spinal cord. So if we're talking about cranial nerves, those are nerves that come off the brain, that's the peripheral neural system. If we're talking about spinal nerves that comes off of the spine, that's part of the peripheral neural system. Ganglia are part of the peripheral neural system. Now, I also want to point out a few key concepts. Uh, you may hear me use the word sensory and the word motor. Now, sensory information, if you touch something sharp with your finger or burn yourself, that information is going to come in to the spinal cord and come up to the brain. So that's sensory information. And sensory information is going up, which is ascending information, right? It ascends, it goes up. And we also refer to that as afferent information. Afferent information. So sensory information goes up, it ascends, and it's called afferent. They all refer to the same thing. It's input coming up and into the nervous system, into the brain. After the brain processes that information, the information can go down the spinal cord and down to the muscles and say, okay, withdraw from that painful stimulus. So that's motor information. And since that information is going down, we say that's descending information or E ferret information. So these three are all related to one another, and these three are all related to one another. Okay. Okay, let's move on. So the central neural system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral neural system is made up of cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Both of them have sensory and motor fibers. Now we know what that means. And the sensory and motor fibers can connect to your muscles, to your glands, and to all of your sensory receptors that we have. So let's take a look at the organization of the nervous system, okay? Here we see it says CNS. So we know that that means it's the brain and the spinal cord. 
information comes in. Well, there's the sensory input. Sensory input ascends and is afferent and it comes into the brain and spinal cord. That's the sensory division. Now, where does the sensory information come from? It comes from the somatic senses. Soma means body. Well, all parts of the body, like your muscles, your joints, the skeleton, all of that is the soma, as well as your special senses, your eyes, your ears, um, proprioceptors, meaning everything that's giving information about where your body is in space and time, all of that special sensory data from your ears, your eyes, your nose, your taste, your feelings from your skeletal muscles, your joints, all of that is coming in to the brain and spinal cord. And the brain and spinal cord will process that information and say, hey, we got to make a decision and do something. That's motor, which is descending information or efferent information. Now, the motor information can be divided into two different neural systems. One is a somatic nervous system or somatic neural system. The other is the autonomic neural system. Somatic neural system, these are the nerves and the neurons that go to your skeletal muscles that make your muscles contract. You have conscious, voluntary control over that. Okay, that's conscious. It's voluntary. You can contract your biceps. You can wiggle your toes. All of that is controlled by this motor division of the somatic neural system. It's voluntary. Autonomic, it sounds like automatic, right? Autonomic means uh, self-law, self-regulating. And the autonomic nervous system is divided into these two very important parts that you may be reading quite a bit about, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic, for the most part, we think of as the accelerator, and parasympathetics we think of as the brake. Sympathetic speeds things up. Parasympathetic, we think, slows things down. For the most part, that's true. The sympathetics we also refer to as the fight or flight response, meaning you're in danger, you got to fight for survival, or you got to flight to get out of danger's way. Your heart rate's going to increase, your breathing's going to be faster, your pupils are going to dilate. That's sympathetic, fight or flight. Parasympathetic is more feed and breed or rest and digest. Same thing, feed and breed or rest and digest, more relaxation, eating, chilling out, just kind of, you know, eating a little bit of red wine, relaxing music. That's all parasympathetic. Heart rate slows down, breathing rate slows down nice relaxed state. The only thing that uh, the sympathetics doesn't speed up, but actually slows down when it's active is digestion. When your sympathetics or your fight or flight response is active, you don't want to be breaking down and digesting food, which is why your mom or grandparents would have told you don't eat and go swimming or don't eat and go exercise. You'll get indigestion. And when the parasympathetic is stimulated, it slows down everything except for digestion. Parasympathetics actually speeds up digestion. When you're in the relaxed state, that's the best time to digest the meal. All right. So sympathetic and parasympathetic, this is going to control all of your smooth muscle around your organs. Smooth muscle is different than skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle is voluntary. Smooth muscle is the stuff around your organs that you can't consciously or voluntarily contract. Uh, the smooth muscle around a woman's uterus that contracts, you can't control that. The smooth muscle around arteries that make them constrict or dilate, you can't control that. Cardiac muscle, you can't control. You can't increase and decrease your heart rate on command. So smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands, these are controlled by the autonomic neural system. So in, in still relating to the autonomic neural system, which is involuntary, the sympathetics is referred to not only fight or flight, but it's the thoracolumbar output because it exists 
at these levels of the spinal cord, T1 to L2. So in the spinal column, we have cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, and lumbar vertebrae. Cervical or the neck, thoracic is the mid-back, lumbar is the lower back. And you have seven cervical, 12 thoracic, and five lumbar vertebrae. When you add them up, you get 24 freely movable bones in your spine. And the way you can remember that is you can eat at 7 a.m., 12 noon, and 5 p.m. You eat at 7 a.m., 12 noon, and 5 p.m. So the seven cervicals, mid back is 12, lower back is five. So between the first thoracic vertebrae and the second lumbar, that's where the, the uh, sympathetics are, your thoracolumbar outflow. T1 to L2, whereas your parasympathetic is called the craniosacral outflow because it involves cranial nerves and sacral segments. When we talk about cranial nerves, they're Roman numeral. So it's cranial nerve three, cranial nerve seven, cranial nerve nine, and cranial nerve 10. That's the cranial division. And then we have sacral segment S2, 3, and 4, that's parasympathetic. It slows down the heart rate, whereas sympathetic speeds up the heart rate. Parasympathetic speeds up digestion, though. Okay, that's the craniosacral division. Autonomic, remember, is involuntary. Somatic neural system going to your skeletal muscles are voluntary. Okay, we'll take a break here. I'll see if there's any questions when we come back. We'll get into the neuron.